And Father, I pray that wisdom and revelation flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind, none of me and all of you. And I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. Now, Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move up and down every aisle, in and out of every road, touch, hear, deliver, set free. Move on every computer screen, every TV screen, every household. Show yourself strong. Overwhelm them with your presence. Presence. Overwhelm us with your presence. And we bind the strong man in the north, south, east, and west, and we loose the Holy Ghost over this word. And Father, we give you all the honor. And Father, we give you all the glory. And Father, we give you all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And Exhale Church said, Amen. Amen. Give God a big shout. You may be seated in the house of God. Uh, we've been talking about for the first time visitors, and a lot of you guys are, are, are returning back to church. Hopefully you've been watching online. If not, that's okay. Nobody judges you. Uh, but if you haven't been watching online, hopefully you've been John 15 Hopefully you've been abiding in your word, abiding in God, having a prayer life, you, you, and, you and one-on-one with God. Uh, hopefully you've been doing that, but, 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 but you know, things happen, and, and, and I understand it, and God still loves you, but it's time to get back, get back to God and the things of God. Now, we've been talking about gaining revelation of the Lord's Prayer, and it comes out of uh, th this, this one disciple that kind of walked up on Jesus and seen Jesus praying, and one of the disciples simply asked him a question. How do, how, do you, how do we do that? Now, John, disciples, John had already taught his disciples in John 17 how to pray. He had already taught them, but this one disciple, which is very fascinating to me, went up to Jesus and said, hey, teach me how to do that. And I asked myself, Derek, you've been born again over 20 years. Have you ever asked anybody? Teach me how to pray. Because a lot of times in church, we pick up things and, and, and in the natural, and we, and we do them on a regimen, but if it's not in our heart, they fall off. But prayer is essential. Prayer is the chief discipline of abiding in God. You can get no close than prayer, abiding in God. Prayer is the chief discipline, and this disciple had enough wherewithal to say, you know what, teach me how to do that. Now, if anybody knows me, I'm the greatest listener in the room. I'm a sponge. And, and while everybody else is trying to flaunt what they know and they really don't know it, I realized real quick the first minute of the conversation, I don't even know what he's talking about. Let me listen and learn. This disciple had to be the same way. Man, I, I never seen him doing that. Everybody else just kind of walked off. And he asked him, hey, can you teach us how to do that? And we're going to pick that up in the word of God. Now, we've went through this whole thing. If you want to get the series, Gain the Revelation of the Lord's Prayer, you can go to our streaming uh, outlets. Uh, uh, it's on Apple TV. It's on uh, Roku TV. It's on uh, 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 Vimeo. It's on uh, Where's Boot. Uh, uh, live stream on the website. YouTube is everywhere. <laughs> Flood the earth. So, but today, uh, we're, we're closing this thing out. With uh, uh, last week, I gave a title. It was Gaining Revelation Part Seven, but it was the wrong title. It was Why Do We Say Amen Part One. I told Pastor Jeremy this morning, correct that on all of our outlets. So today is Why Do We Say Amen Part Two. Why do we say Amen? Why is Amen? Why is that word the most known word in all languages across the world? It's a powerful word. And Jesus said, "Hey, at the climax of your prayer." Walk away from it with a certainty of truth that what you just prayed, God heard your prayers. Well, what do we say to signify that? We say, amen. Matthew 6. I'm going to move through this word pretty swift today. You know what? Before I do that, uh, let's go to John 17 since I brought it up. John 17. I think. Okay. John 17. Yep. Yeah. 
uh, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, John 17, verse 1, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may also glorify thee, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Verse 3, and this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ. The only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which you have gave me to do. Isn't that something? You know, a lot of people, a lot of people ask the question, why am I here to glorify God? What's the will of God for my life? To glorify God. In your work, in your business, is it glorifying God? I asked the question last week. In your marriage, is it glorifying God? If you're a student, are you glorifying God in your classroom? Are you glorifying God in the locker room? It's to glorify God. And that fulfillment, that, 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 that feeling, that, that, that fulfillment only comes from God. Everything else is a sugar high. I was just reading and, and doing some research for our finance thing. This, we're going to do this, this this year. And they said... They said, when you turn 40, if you don't have 10 years of your annual income in a nest egg, you're behind. Think of that. (laughs) 10 years of your your annual salary in in a nest egg, a retirement account, you're behind. I looked at it and I said, well, my gosh. You know, I watch these shows sometimes. I look at uh, the lady there, she used to be on CNBC, uh, Sue Jorman, and, 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 and the guy come on and said, yeah, I'm, I'm 28 years old and my wife is 26, and uh, we just want to know what to do with this, 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 and this. And she'll say, well, well how, much, how much do you have in your retirement account? Well, we got $385,000 that we put away in our 401k and our retirement account, so on and so forth. I say, 28 and 26, 385? See, some people got it early. Some people caught on early. So some people already knew at 16 what they were going to do. But as believers, sometimes we can lose hope when you hear stuff like that. I came here to tell you that your source, which is God, makes up for all of that. There's only so much math you can do. And when you get that revelation, that, hey, man, I, 40 years old, I make 50 grand a year. I'm supposed to have at least, at, at least uh, 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 $500,000 sitting in a nest egg retirement account. Man, I'm... I'm I'm, 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 I'm way behind. No, you're not if you're plugged into God. All things are possible with God. And so many times when we, 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 we hear things through our filter and we don't, we, don't, we don't hear them through the goodness and the grace of God, knowing that God is going to take care of me. So why wear yourself out trying to beat the math? You won't do it. You won't do it. So, so, so Jesus says, Jesus, he said, look, he says, verse 5, and now, O Father, glorify, glorify, glorify you me with thine own flesh, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Verse 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which you gave me out of the world. God Almighty. Woo. Thine they were, and you gavest them me, and they have kept my word, kept thy word. Verse 7, glory to God. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are thee. Verse 8, for I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came down from thee, and they believe that you did send me. Next verse. Pay attention to how Jesus carried himself in prayer. Next verse. I Pray for them. Now, we've been talking about gaining revelation of the Lord's prayer, but prayer has a lot of elements to it, and one of those elements is you pray for other people. You pray for them. So it's become so cliche, uh, you know, so-and-so, and so oh, I'm, I'll pray for you. And don't say a doggone thing. Don't get before God on their behalf. The best thing you can do is grab their hands right there and say, let's pray right now. Because I said, I, I cover you in prayer. You walk off and your kids want a, a soda pop and, and, and this one over here wants some chips. Next thing you know, you done forgot all about the prayer. Jesus said, listen, these people, I've stood them. I, 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 I've introduced, introduced you to them. And guess what else I do? I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they 
are thine. Belong to you. So the element of the element of praying for people is powerful. You know what that does? It lets us know we believe in prayer for us. When people call you up, I've said this so many times, call you up, text you, give you a little small gift, a little token, so on and so forth. That is the love of God standing up in your life. And here's what the devil does. He wants you to investigate, well, why is she? I wonder why he's doing that now. It's like, but God placed you on my heart. That's why I'm doing it. I pray for you. That's why I'm doing it. You pray for her. That's why you're doing it. He said, Jesus said, one element of my life, you know, walking before God is, I pray for others. Luke 5. We're going to get, we're, we're, we're get there. We're going to finish this. Dog going to aid me in today. We're going to finish it. <clears throat> pray for them, man. <clears throat> Luke 5. Verse uh, 16, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> well, verse 15. Oh, gosh. <laughs> verse 14. So Jesus is, G- Jesus is coming out of, you know, touching and healing folks. And, and he tells them, hey, don't, don't, don't go out and say nothing. I'm not trying to get all the glory here. My father gets the glory. And, and verse 14, and he charged them to tell no man but to go and show th- uh, 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 thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according to as Moses commanded for testimony unto them. Verse 15, but so much they more vent their fame abroad him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Verse 16, and he, he who? Jesus. Withdrew himself into the wilderness and pray. The reason we're gaining a revelation of the Lord's prayer is if you think you don't have to withdraw yourself from the noise of the world and get before God, you're being cozened and fooled. You can't handle it. Sooner or later, you'll find yourself acting just like it. Sooner or later, you'll find yourself talking just like it. And what you don't realize, it's noisy out there. And it's not saying that we're better than them. It's just saying, okay, as a believer, watching Jesus' life, he said, man, I've been laying hands on folks. They've been healed, and people think I'm this, I'm that. I keep trying to redirect them to God, my Father. Man, I got to get away. What do you say? I got to get away from this and get before God and pray. And anybody who wants to argue with you over prayer doesn't have a prayer life. They just don't have one. I don't think it takes a... They just don't have one. They don't communicate with their father. They don't pray to their father. I don't, this is so boring. They, they, they don't have one. And I, and I came to tell you this morning that God wants to hear from you. God wants an intimate relationship with you where you can just lay it all on the line. Disconnect from the world and plug into your father, which is in heaven. And I'm telling you, you're going to come out of that thing built up. When you stay before God, you stay built up. When you don't stay before God, you live your life for men. Why? Because that's where you seek your praise from. And he says, it doesn't work like that. That's going to taper off. All that's going to fade away. All that's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. But me, Elion, the most high God, I'll be right there when all of the smoke clears. Spend time with the Father. Amen. So Jesus prayed alone. Uh, Acts, Acts chapter 1. Why do we say amen? We're getting there. But I want to show you that Jesus, Jesus had a prayer life. <laughs> Jesus had a prayer life. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1. Glory to God. Man, if you want to be fascinated, just read the book of Acts. That thing will fascinate you. Just, just read it for 30 days. Just, just read it, read it, read it. It will absolutely, you, you'll know, uh, uh, the Bible will make sense to you. <clears throat> okay. I don't want to read all that. Mm, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, 
uh, but wait, wait for the promise of the Father, this is Jesus, wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence, verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel, verse 7, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. You know, when you read that, no man, no man carries or owns the glory of God. God owns it. You ever find me trying to take you out of the glory of God and say, I get all the glory? No, 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 no. I don't get all the glory. My intellect don't get all the glory. God gets all the glory. Whenever you find that happening, you better run. You better run. Why? The Father wants you. He said, these are my sheep. They hear my voice. You're just an instrument now. The day they start hearing your voice over mine, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, we got things in order. We, we, we got authority, so on and so forth. Uh, um, you know, my cousin, I told you about him, was a trooper, FBI, all that kind of stuff. You know, you, you know I, I just, I grew up around authority, and I just, I really understand authority. I really understand authority, except when it comes to favorite snacks in the house. I kind of violate I violate authority in a minute in the name of, my God, look at what I bought you last week. And I'll grab that ice cream, that vegan ice cream, and I will tear it up and say to myself, I'm going to run around the corner and grab her another one before she gets home. And it never happens. And lo and behold, they go in that thing, go, where is it at? And you'll sit right there and go, I don't know. You're lying right there to the Holy Ghost. So yeah, yeah, I understand authority. But Jesus understood authority. He was always pointing people back to his, to his father. Uh, verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Verse 9. And when, we, when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up uh, and a cloud received him out, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also, yea, men of, 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 of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Man, the confirmation is right there that he's coming. Amen. Verse 12. Then return thee unto Jerusalem from the mount called of, uh, 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 Mount Olive, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day, Sabbath day's journey, verse 13. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Aphaeus, and Simon, Zealous, Zealous, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer. Somebody say, Jesus prayed for others. Now we see right here, it's good to pray with one another. We have a prayer call on Mondays where people get on and, and, and hey, we're all, just, we're all there praying, contending for the will of God, you know, and, 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 and it's, it's, it's there to connect, you know, via prayer. And, you know, I, I, I really... I really know and have, have lived what I'm ready to say. I know it. Before I got born again, wanting better was my God. And when, when I got born again, when better got better, God got smaller. I was not in a need for a savior. As I heard the message, what I heard was, man, my life can get better if I just give my life to Christ. 
You know, you be down in a situation, whether you're in prison or you're in a divorce or you're over here into this, things not going, you just lost your business, your house poor, clothes, and so forth. And if you're not careful, what you'll do is you'll be introduced to God. And what will happen is you just want better than what you have. And as things got better in my life, God got smaller, leading all the way up to six years in marriage. And God had gotten so small, my wife said, that's it. This is, this, this, we have nothing in common except two children. What happened? That's better got better because we had all the money. Nine vacations a year, traveling, speaking, all that kind of stuff. As better got better, God got smaller. So when it really got rough, when we didn't know if we should go left, go right, Our souls were tormented. Our hearts were hardened towards one another. When that thing really got rough, better couldn't save us. And that's when I went in that closet. I said, God, no more of this head-to-head stuff. No more of this knowledge stuff with you. I don't, if I can't feel you, God, I don't want anything to do with this Christian stuff. I want to feel you in my heart. God, I want to know that you are God. And I was in the closet crying beckoning for my marriage to stay together for me and for my children, for our future and our future generations. And I was on, and that right there, that intimate time with God in prayer is when he came into my heart. And I didn't want a better marriage. I wanted a God marriage. So you got to be on guard and you got you to ask yourself, what, what's happening is See, you go from better to better. And as you go from better to better, with no relationship with God, God gets smaller as your life gets better. And I'm talking, talking right here, I'm talking to me. That's what happened to me. So I know it can happen. And I I would tell myself, you have a relationship with God. No, you're not spending any time with him. You're not even reading your word. How do you gain a relationship with anybody and spend no time with them? Whether it's in the spirit or in the natural, it don't matter. How do you even do it? You got to spend time with the Father. You just do. And you got to look at your life and go, okay, what he just said, as better has gotten better over my life because I didn't have a window or a pot 10 years ago. And at that time, I said, I want it better. I wanted more money. I wanted a car without instructions. I wanted a house. I wanted this. I wanted that. You want it better. But you never came to the realization that you needed a savior. And you got into God for the better life. And God says, I do better than life. I do better than better life. I do the Zoe life, the God kind of life. So when you find yourself digressing from the things of God, it's like, man, because better has become your God and better talks to you and better tells you, well, you're you're okay. We're good to go. Let me tell you something. What better will do, undoubtedly, it will let you down. God told us, I heard you say that one time, it just really smote my spirit, and I just, I just, I just didn't receive that. It was just, it was just so negative, so on and so forth. I said it was just so word. <laughs> Proverbs 23, 5. Riches will find wings, grow wings, and fly, fly cleaner, cl- clean away from you. Don't even put your trust in man. Psalms 118, 8. Put it in God Himself. You mean to tell me a man worth $20 million can lose everything and you worth $25,000 and all of a sudden you're just awesome, just awesomely secure in all the things of, the things of financial matters? No way. Things got better and God got smaller. I said, Lord, that'll never happen to me again. <clears throat> so they prayed with one another. They prayed with one another. I'm real big on when the food comes to the table, who's praying? (laughs) My kids need to see me pray. Your kids need to see you pray when the food comes to the table. It's it's not a religious thing. It's just, Father, we're thanking you for this daily bread. We're thanking you for the provision for our jobs to provide this. We give thanks to you. 
It's prayer. <clears throat> Say amen if you're still out there. Amen. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I used to party like it's 1999. When I was in the world, I, 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 I didn't let up, man. It, it was, a, it, 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 hey, 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 like it's 1999 relentlessly. I'm talking relentlessly. Somebody says, why are you even telling us this? Because just like, just, just, just like Saul, I was radical, relentless, and fanatical in the world. Radical, relentless, fanatical in the world. And then when we come to God, we calm down. Go all of 2021, ain't talk to nobody about God. <laughs> Get so busy, you know, you want your kids to have good grades, but you never pause and say, kids, what is, what is God saying to you? What is God saying to you? You'll be shocked at what they tell you. John 17. Oh, boy. John, John I'm sorry, John 17. Verse 9, I'm sorry. Good gosh. <sighs> Listen to this now. Jesus prayed with folks. If you know this is talking about when Peter, James, and John, he took them up, uh, uh, took them up with him to pray, which is, uh, again, a fascinating story in the Bible. It's like, why these three? Why these three? Why these three? When we get into relationships start teaching on relationships, one of the things I was sharing with my wife is we've got to stop discounting seed time and harvest time in relationships. I don't understand why you always run to the rescue of my little sister, and here I am over here with four kids, and you just seem like I'm not even here, so on and so forth. Okay, wait, wait a minute now. You do realize how much she sows into us, her time. And for us to say, you know what, that don't even matter. No, no, no. You cannot discount seed time and harvest time in relationships. And what we do is we look around and we go, well, my God, look at her spending more time with them. Look at her spending more time. Look at him spending. And we never stop to say, okay, how much time, how much, how much time do they sow into them or him or her watching their kids, helping them do this, helping them do that? Well, forget all of that stuff. Now, you can't forget seed time, harvest time in relationships. You tell your wife or you tell your husband or you make him feel like he's a little boy for five years, six years, seven years, never honor him, never respect him, never revere him. I don't care what kind of education or body you have. It's, here's what's going to happen to you. Be not deceived. You've sown those seeds. The harvest is coming up. We can't just say stuff and think that it's not seed. There's a harvest on that. So he took Peter, James, and John's up to the mountain with him. What is that? Jesus prayed with others. Learn to pray with others. It's okay to be around, to, to, to say, you know what, to this, this week I just got to be around some women of God. You know, something happens to your life as a woman when you say, I got to be around women of God versus be around women of gossip. Women of gossip will have you so fired up and mad and confused and this and that, and you walk away, you're going to do you and all this kind of stuff. Not realizing, man, can't now, now one of these jokers, can't, can't now one of these jokers take me any higher. So you're going to be the company you keep. So Jesus took these guys up, and I'm a firm believer that these guys presented to him a holy life. Presented to him, I won't be bothered if you ask me to pray with you. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that Jesus had watched that. And, and he said, you know, you, you, you guys won't feel out of place. Let's go. <clears throat> so, 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 so John 17 tells us, 
After six days, verse one, after six days, Jesus talking with Peter, James and John, his, his brother, and bringing them up into a high mountain apart. He took them up there and, 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 and they watched him transfigure. He took them to a holy space place and they watched him. They, they, they watched the prayer. They watched everything. And I'm a firm believer that it's because Jesus had watched them. I choose you guys to go on this holy of holy mission with me. It's okay to pray with others. You can have a home water that you can, man, you can shoot the breeze with, so on and so forth. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But when you need, when you need some fellowship from God's word, you better have somebody in your Rolodex that you can call and say, hey, uh, lunch is on me, man. I just need to be built up. Man, I, I, just, I, just, I just need to be, I need to be built up. You know, I, I just need to, I just need to, I need to be built up. You know, if I talk to Elder Moore, he, he, he's going to build me up. He's going to build me up. Man of God, keep doing, you know, man of God, keep doing what you're doing. Man of God, that word was good. Man of God, I'm telling you, man of God, just keep doing what you're doing. Man of God, we're drawing close to God. Man of God, this, 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 this. And you need people in your life like that. Why? Because, because everybody, you know, everybody, everybody, everybody is not wholly build up conscious around you. Because you present such a strong front that they're afraid to say, hey, is everything okay with you? Can we pray? Can we just go hang out? I just want to see how you and your wife are doing. But you, when, you prevent this strong, when you present this strong, this strong woman of God, man of God, no one approaches you. And you become unapproachable. Why? Because they feel like, well, you, you must have it all together. Not realizing you're crumbling on the inside. Jesus said, three, you three, let's go. <clears throat> Matthew 6. Why are you turning there? Uh, l- let me give you this. <clears throat> Make sure the amen of your life matches God's amen to you. And God's yes to us was, I gave you my son. My only begotten son. Make sure the amen of your life, how you live your life, is an amen. Amen to the Father. He says, you know what? You are my Father. And when people see me, when people see my generosity, when people see how I carry myself as a husband, when people see how I carry myself as a wife, when people see how I carry myself as a single man, as a young woman, what's happening is they, they, they see my yes to you. My yes to you. Never let being real be above your yes to God. I'm just going to be real and free. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going I'm, I'm, I'm to be real and free. You know, you know, a lot of times being real and free is say, you know what? I need a license to curse this joker out. Just, 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 just go off. Just, 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 just go off. I need a license to do that. That's, that's what a lot of being free is. Let your amen, your, your, let your life be amen. Let your life be, listen, I live by a certain truth that God is God. He is my father in heaven, and I live by his will, not my will. My life is a yes. It's an amen. It's a yes to God's covenant with me. <clears throat> Matthew 6. We're going to skip all that stuff, and we're going down to where I want to get to. <laughs> Matthew 6. Somebody say amen up in here. Amen. <laughs> so verse 9, it starts. The Lord's Prayer starts. You know, after this manner, he's teaching me how to pray. Let's skip, let's skip all the way down to verse uh, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, we've learned that we too can hurt people. We can, we can trespass people. We can say the wrong stuff. So forgive us too. We, we, mention, we mention us in our prayers as those who can hurt people. Verse 13, and lead us not into temptation. We've learned that we, we receive God's watchful eyes. God gives us watchful eyes to see the traps. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, immoral ways. Deliver us from that. For thine is the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to you. Thine is the power. The power belongs to you. And thine is the glory. All of the glory belongs to you forever, which is all future time, we've learned. It all belongs to you. Amen. Thought number one. On your screens, all prayer should have the glory of God as its chief aim. 
All prayer should have the glory of God as its chief aim. Amen is our yes to the glory of God. Amen is our yes to the glory of God. <clears throat> Next thought in your notes. According to the, 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 the Lord's prayer, all intercession and prayer, all intercession and prayer before the throne of God must begin and end with resounding praise to him. Him who? The Father. All intercession and prayer before the throne of God, when you get before God, must begin and end with a resounding praise to him, the Alpha and the omega of prayer must be for the glory of God. When we come into God's presence, listen, we start acknowledging him. That's what Jesus, we start acknowledging him. Hallowed be thy name. Greatly, I greatly revere you. And, and what you're actually saying is, I know if my lips move and say a lie, you know the truth in my heart. There's no need for me to fake the phone. There's no need for me to play games with you. I know when I open my mouth before you, I can take the route as a hypocrite and an actor, or I can go ahead and tell you what you already know that I'm going through and what I'm dealing with. I hallow your name. I greatly revere you. I cannot pull the wool over your eyes. So all prayer, all intercession, it, 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 when you get before the throne of God, must begin and end with in this case, we hallow your name, we greatly revere you, and end with amen, so be it. I believe everything I just prayed. So we book in all of our uh, 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 declaration of how good God is, how great God is. We book in that thing with, 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 with acknowledging who he is on the front end and acknowledging who he is on the back end. And we say yes to this certain truth, and we say, you know what? We walk away from it, and we don't worry our prayers after we leave. Why? Because God heard them. Go ahead and live your life. So much frustration comes from, well, God, you didn't answer my prayer immediately. And God's like, you don't come to me to instruct me. You come to me to revere me. That, that's, that's, that's what prayer, you come to me and you revere me. I already know what you need before you even ask me. So you, so, 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 so that's what it is. We have to, we have to come out of this, 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 um, this, this individual inclusion of self when we go into prayer. It's like, no, 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 no. Let it all out. Let it all go. Makeup need to be smearing, wigs need to be twisted, everything. Let, let it all out. Why? You're before the Father, your Father which is in heaven, and he wants to hear from you, and you'd be shocked at how much deliverance comes from you acknowledging what's going on with you. Some of the greatest frustration for Christians is trying to act like they're healed and they're not. The book of Mark, Jesus laid a hand on the guy, he laid, laid hands on him, and he laid hands on him, and he took his hands off and said, can you see? Man, why in the world would you ask the man, can he see you? Just lay hands on him, Jesus. Jesus knew it's up to the ground to receive this. And watch the guy. The guy didn't lie. The guy said, uh, I kind of see, but men are walking around looking like trees. And Jesus laid hands on him again. A lot of our deliverance is going to come from self-honesty in prayer. And you tell God, you better tell God that you're lonely if you're lonely. Now I go to God, I tell God, bring me a man in my life. And I need that man right now. I need him making six figures. And I need him this. I don't want no kid, no nappy head children. I don't want none of that stuff dealing with baby mama. I don't want. And you're like instructing God. Instead of just revering God and, and telling God how great he is in your life and acknowledging he's your source of deliverance, he's your source of supply. And when you walk away from that, your father in heaven knows what you need. So you think you want a strong headed man. Strong-headed man and your strong head ain't going to get it. You think you want that kind of lady. You think you want that kind of lady. You know, I, I was talking to a guy yesterday. I said, look, I said, I said, you know, we as husbands, I say, we're fine to our wives. Never get the big head and think 
that you have all these selections out here who's going to treat you the same way that she does. That's the man. Let me talk to the ladies. <laughs> you are fine to your husband. Never get the big head and just think that every man out there is, co- is going to see you the same way. You're fine to your husband with kids. Now, you got to know that. And I told him, I say, I have a revelation. I remember watching Chris Rock, Chris Rock coming up in the service. I remember watching Chris Rock. He was going through a divorce, and he said he was going to, he went to a little celebrity thing. You know, he was kind of, you know, just kind of, you know, just, just kind of hanging out there, and he's, he's free now. He's away from that controlling wife and all this kind of stuff. He's clean, smelling good from head to toe. So he walked up to Rihanna, and he said, hey, what, what, what's going on with you, uh, uh, Rihanna? What's happening? He said, Rihanna looked at him like, Grandpa? <laughs> He said, man, I felt so ugly in the moment. He said, I realized real quick, oh, when my wife was saying, you're so beautiful, you're so this, you're so that, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. He said, he said a light bulb went off. Oh, my God. And I'm here to tell you, that is just the reality. So you, 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 you <laughs> I can't wait till we get relationships. So we can't get the big head. We stay low, and we allow God, who we greatly revere, to lead us and guide us. Amen? Amen. Next thought. Uh, Our prayers are never an attempt to bend God's will. (laughs) It's never an attempt to bend God's will towards us. No, we say, your will be done. We don't say, I want your will done for me like this. Prayer is never an attempt to bend God's will towards us. It's to weaken ours and receive his. When you greatly reveal the Father in the Lord's prayer and in prayer, what's happening is you don't know if you should go to first or second base. You don't know if you should take the job or not. You don't know if you should leave your husband or not. You, you just don't know. But, so what do you do? You ask for God's will. And as you ask for that, your self-will weakens. And now your eyes can see. Now your eyes can, you can have eyes that give the benefit of the doubt now. You can have ears that give the benefit of the doubt now. You can have a heart that gives the benefit of the doubt now. And you can begin to realize, oh, man, I'm, I'm not such a great, great husband after all. I mean, man, I'm not such a great wife after all. My gosh. What happens? Your self-will is weakened. Now God's will is bubbling up in you. And it's okay, to, it's, okay to, it's okay to present weakness to God. It's okay to present the, I don't know how to your wife. It's okay to present, well, I don't know how to do that to your husband. You know, so if, if so many wives struggle with affection towards their husband because they didn't get it from daddy. And it's okay to go to God with that. Because if you don't do that, you know what, you, you know what you're going to say? Suck it up. He's like, Lord, have mercy. I just need some wrapping arms, anointed arms around me right now with a closed mouth and a pat on the back of my head saying, everything's going to be okay. You got me right here. So I said, how you knew that? My wife does it to me. There's something about them arms. Good gracious. All the problems go away. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. What is it? Come here. No, I just man. Come, come, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. And she'll just she hug and embrace, grab the back of my head, and my knees just begin to buckle. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I can be weak around you, and you got some anointed arms to minister to me in this time. Thank you that you're not instructing me and all this kind of stuff. I'll be like, oh my God. When I come out of those arms, everything is bright now. Next thought. Prayer is drawing on your heavenly account where God has deposited all his promises for your life. Where God has de- his covenant with you, when you go into prayer and ask for God's will to be, doing, be, be done in your life, you are drawing on those promises for your life. That is how a kid can say all their life they want to be a doctor and, 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 and because, because their parents said get a good education, get a good job, and get, get a good profession, and they do all, all those things. Because they never pause and say, what is God saying to you now? 
And they do it for five, ten years only to discover, I want to be a school teacher. I don't like this. I'm doing this for income. I'm doing this for job security. I'm doing this for financial security. I don't like this. That's what happens when we don't teach them, hey, what is God saying to you? We let their will and our will go forward in their lives. I'm not saying you, want, you don't want your kids to have a good education. Yes, you do. But at some point, you better start discovering. In, discover, in, in D612, one of the things is, okay, discover who you are in God. Discover your pathway. Discover your passions. You better do that because the amount of people who have student loans right now that is not working that profession will tell you, Ask your kids what's in their heart to do now. Now, if you're looking for, for six-figure and all this kind of stuff, and they may not say that. They may not say that. See, what it is, we get afraid like, oh, you're not going to be able to take care of yourself. God's not going to be able to take care of you. God took you out of the muck and the mire and the miry clay out of the gutter, and here you are living for God. You didn't have nothing to do with that. You gave your life to Christ, and God took care of you. He's going to take care of your children the same way. I can tell you the amount of times my super parenting self got in God's way. And then when they hit stumbling blocks, they didn't know what to do. You, you know what to do. No, you never taught me that. You never taught me how to respond to life. You, you never taught me that. You just taught me to prepare for it. But, but the, you know, there's a story. A guy says, a guy was talking to his son and said, what are you going to do uh, when you get out of the house? What are you going to do when you get your family? He said, exactly what you prepared me to do. Nothing. You taught me how to get good grades. You didn't teach me how to be a man to my wife. You taught her how to get good grades. You didn't teach her how to be a wife, a woman, a mother, a, a, a young lady. Care. See, 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 that investment, is, is, it has to happen. Just don't leave them to themselves. Just don't leave them to the school system. Just don't leave them to the books. The mother has to invest the way God invests in us. <clears throat> Next thought. Wrapping up here. Prayer... This is good. Prayer is not hoping in the dark that there might be a God of good intentions out there somewhere. Prayer is not hoping in the dark that there may be a God of good intentions out there somewhere. God is always there. God is right here, right now. You don't go to, you don't go to God and, and pray to a God of good intentions. You go to God and pray to your heavenly father who knows what you need before you even ask. When we can bend our knee to a God that knows what we need before we ask, peace will immediately come into our lives. <laughs> immediately. Immediately. So much revelation, so much deliverance will come to you financially speaking when you realize you're not going to be Jeff Bezos. You're not. You're not going to put Bill Gates out of business. You're not. You're not. <laughs> but you can have a good life. You can have a great life in God. But man, you're thinking that somehow or another, it's just going to fall out of the sky that you're just this, this, this multi-gazine there with no investment, no work ethic after 5 o'clock? It's not going to happen. It's designed to keep you in turmoil in here because you're thinking you deserve something out here that you're really not investing in. And the devil will keep you right there instead of you staying, I'm glorifying God with everything that I do. And God will take me from glory to glory. That may not be from here to, to 25 accounts. It may be five more accounts next year, but he's going to take me from glory to glory. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be that. Do you know how smart Jeff Bezos and, and Elon Musk and these guys are? Do you know how smart they are? <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking unbelievably you can't even comprehend. Couldn't even hold a conversation with them. Unbelievably smart. That doesn't mean you're dumb. It's just stay in your lane. <laughs> and do what you do and do it well. That don't mean you can't learn nothing new, but you know what you, you know what brings in the money. So prayer's not hoping that in the dark there, there may be a God out here with good intentions somewhere. No, your father hears your prayers. Next thought. As believers, let's lose the tendency to use prayer to dictate to God. 
Let's lose the tendency to use prayer to dictate to God. Let's stop going to God giving God instructions. And let's start going to God revering who he is. We've learned in this series, when you know the who you're praying to, everything else falls in place. But if you don't know the who you're praying to, you think you got to make stuff up. Or you start dictating. Or you start telling God what you want and telling God what to do and telling God what you want. And God is like, I am not on your time clock. Why would you say that, God? I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I already know your whole life. I already know what you need, when you need it, the time you need it. I already know all of that. So you just come to me and revere me, and I'm just going to supply as needed. And certain stuff I'm going to keep away from you because I know what it'll do to you. <clears throat> Next thought. Prayer is not a self-centered pursuit fueled by fulfi- the fulfilling of one's indulgences. Prayer is not a self-centered pursuit fueled by the fulfilling of one indulgences. In other words, we go to God with a list, a, a list of 20 things we want. That's not prayer. God says, I give you the desires of your heart. And a lot of times we don't even know that. We think we do, but we don't even know that. My desire is just to cancel this student loan. God's like, that's the desire of your heart? To cancel this student loan? So you're going to push the student along right behind getting rid of this high blood pressure or whatever. You, you, is that really the desire in your heart now? We don't even know it. What we're saying is whatever causes us the most pain, God, remove it. And God's like, that's not a desire. <laughs> a desire lights you up like New Year's Eve. And I know what that desire is, God says. God says, I know exactly what that is. I know exactly what it is that lights you up as a mother. I know exactly what it is that lights you up as a father. I know exactly what it is that lights you up as a teenager. I know exactly what it is that lights you up as a grandparent. God knows the desires of our heart, and he gives them to us. So so we can't be self-centered, because here's what self-centered, here's what self-centered, here's where me being self-centered in my prayers led me frustrated and mad at God. Because I, 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 I had absorbed everything I was asking for. I was like, my God, and I'm telling you, this is when it is that. And man, when it didn't happen, I felt like God failed me. God's like, I didn't fail you. I didn't fail you. What do you mean you didn't fail me? Well, Derek, it just didn't happen. I didn't fail you. What do you mean I couldn't grow up? I mean, my mother died of cancer. I didn't grow up with a family. So it, God says, I still didn't fail you. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It happened. I didn't fail you. Well, why am I over here w- w- without a family and they over here with a family? I'm trying to figure out which God are you? And God's like, the same God. I don't know what to tell you, Derek, but that wasn't me. That was your two parents making a decision. End of story. I mean, they're free moral agents. It's not robots. It wasn't me. Why are you mad at me? I'm just saying, I'm telling you, I had that rash on my hand, and I went there, and I prayed in that small group, and I said, God, I receive it. You are the great healer. You are Jehovah Rapha. And the next morning, I was in that car, and I forgot my cream that goes on that eczema, and, and got, got dog, and I was itching up something at work, and I was like, God, where are you? I'm in the tube that you left at home. <laughs> it's not, it's not. I still love you. I can look at God right now and say, man, I only got two kids, God, and you knew I wanted four, you knew I wanted five, and possibly six, or whatever it is, and I'm just trying to figure out why in the world, because you made a decision. Leave me out of your, leave me out of your little frustrations, Derek. I am still God, and I still love you. And the only one who's causing you to question that is the enemy himself. I still love you. See, the enemy wants us to live back here with God. God's like, do like Paul. Keep pressing this way. God is, he's definitely touched by the infirmities, by our feelings, so on and so forth. But, 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 but guess what? We're human. But you got you to stay in God because God knows the desires of your heart. And God can blow your mind tomorrow. 
And you go, man, I just feel like a brand new woman. Man, I feel like a man. And you just release God, release him from what you think he did to you. He didn't do it. <clears throat> Next thought. Here we go. The transcript of our private life will often become the script of our public life. The transcript of our private prayer life will often become the script of our public life. <laughs> I remember one time being at lunch uh, uh, with my pastor and, he, he, and, and, and a leader was there. And nothing religious, he just wanted to see. Let's see if they're going to pray over their food. And, 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 you know, no big deal. I just said, man, I got him in a leadership position. I just want to see if he's going to at least bow his head and pray over his food. I said, okay, let's see. Oh, no, he's grabbing it. Oh, he's grabbing the salt, pepper, ketchup. Sandwich is open. Mouth is wide open. Oh, he's eating. No big deal. But it's just the script of what's happening in his private life. I can be with some people sometimes and say, oh, 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 hold up, let's go, ahead and, <laughs> let's go ahead and bless the food. But at some point, you want those same people to say, you know what, oh, I'll I, I go ahead and bless the food. I'll bless it. What is that? They've been paying attention. That before we indulge in this right here, let's give God the praise for this food. So oftentimes the transcript of our private life, private prayer life, will often become the script of our public life. It's hard to curse people out when you call yourself a praying person. Maybe you're just babbling. Maybe you're not reverencing God when you go in there. Maybe you're checking this thing off your agenda, but sometimes people with the deepest prayer life are the meanest. It's like, man, how, how is that translating over here, out here? How is that even possible? Do people offend us? Yes, but you should be the first one to get back on course if you're spending time with God. So the transcript of our private prayer life is going to show up as a script in our public life. Next thought. Our amen is the expression, watch this, write this down in your notes. Our amen is the expression of assured expectancy and confidence in God's covenant with us. Our amen, when we say so be it, when we say yes to God, is the expression of assured expectancy and confidence in God's covenant with us. That's what you mean when you say amen. You walk away with a certainty of truth. You walk away with assured expectancy and confidence that bread will be on your table tomorrow. You walk away with sure, assured expectancy and confidence that evil come nigh your dwelling. You walk away with assured expectancy and confidence that the will of God is being done in your life. And in your kids' life, and in your family, and in your generations, both up and down, and assured expectancy. You walk away. When you get up and you say amen, that's what you're saying. When you say amen, you're saying yes to God and everything that he said, yes to you in. And that's the covenant he has with you. You're saying yes to it. Certainty of truth. You don't walk away doubting. If you're going to get the job or not. Maybe the job is not for me. But one thing I do know, I have bread tomorrow. And God's going to provide it. It may not be ideal, but God's going to provide the bread. That's what I know. What I do know, it may be crazy and chaotic on my job, but all I know is the kingdom is coming to it. That's all I know. It may be crazy in this classroom, on this, on this team, on this basketball team, on this softball team. It may be crazy. They're talking about me. He's talking about me, all this kind of stuff. One thing I do know is I pray your, your kingdom come in all areas of my life. It's coming. And his kingdom coming may not remove them. It may grow you up. And God gets bigger in you now. So, oh, God, you didn't call me. You didn't call me to be down here arguing. You called me to lead them. Lord, I receive being the captain of the softball team. <laughs> I receive that leadership role. That's what you call me to do. Your kingdom come. See, kingdom come is not always removing. It's growing up and increasing. When his kingdom comes in you. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> ah, 
Next thought. When we say amen, essentially we are saying it is God's truth and we have zero doubt about it. When you say amen, you're saying this is God's truth and I have zero, absolutely zero doubt about it. That's why I find it hard, you know, for people to take you off of God. Man, she came into his life and destroyed, messed her life up. I mean, he came into her life and just messed her life up. Well, wait a minute now. If you are in God, what happens is people will call you spiritually dumb deep and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, spiritually dumb deep, but uh, your love, your shoulders, your, your hips, your eyes, they're not so good that they're going to take me out of my father's hands. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not with all that church stuff. You know, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of, I kind of, kind of flow with God. You know, as an individual soul. Well, I hear what you're saying, but where has that led you? You know, I, hey, if you got a daughter, you want your daughter. You, you know, you you want to meet the young man. You want to say, okay, now what? what okay, what, what, which way are we going with this? Which way are we going with it now? How are you gonna? So when you take her last name, what you're saying is, uh, Derek, uh, those three meals a day that you provide for her, I'm going, I'll make sure that happens. Uh, the car breaks down or whatever it is, car insurance, gas in the car, whatever, whatever she needs, mostly what, that you're giving, what you're saying is when, 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 when your name leaves and she gets mine, what I'm saying is I'm going to take care of that. Okay, man, you know how big of a job that is? Well, I love her. Huh? Well, I hear what you're saying. But I provide those three meals when she got attitude. I tell her angels to go before her when she got attitude it, leaving the house. I pray over every single day. So I'm just trying to figure out, you know, I, I understand the love and all this kind of stuff, but know this. You, a lot of other stuff come along with that. Have zero doubt about it. Last thought, we get out of here. We should always live our amen. <laughs> I said earlier, we should always live our amen through unwavering belief in the Lord's covenants, covenant with us. We should always live that amen, that so be it, that certainty of truth with unwavering belief. Mama, am I going to be able to go on a school trip? Yep, God will provide. I have no doubt about it. Well, so, so, Daddy, so, so you guys getting divorced? Well, how, am I, how, how are we going to? I have no doubt about it. God will take care of us. I'm unwavering. I live out my amen. I just don't say amen and, and, and live my life in fear. I really believe that God's going to take care of us. Well, I'm just saying, you better get a lawyer because all I know is that's a big corporation. Uh, all the power is his. Down is the kingdom, down is the power, down is the glory. All the glory. God's going to take care of me. I, 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 I have no doubt about that. Where are we going to get a lawyer from? I, I got one. Vinicius is his. I'm fine. And next thing you know, God says, I'll I do it for you for free. That's God. Amen. That's God's favor. The Bible says Jesus grew in stature with God and man. So when you say amen from this day forward, what you're saying is, I have a certainty of truth. I have unwavering belief. That my father, which is in heaven, is going to take care of me. And everything connected with me, he's going to take care of me. Well, that sounds kind of arrogant. Call it what you want. It sounds kind of faith that he will not leave me, will not forsake me, and he loves me. Well, Derek, where's your mother at? Look, my mother knows God more than I will ever know him. She's in, matter of fact, she's graduated to where I'm trying to get to. You're not going you're not going to win with that argument right there. God decided God didn't decide to do anything. Cancer did it. Sickness and disease did it. But know what? You know what? She's with her father that's in heaven right now. I know that much and that's a glorious place to be and that's where my mind will stay. Oh, what about grandkids? What about all the time? What about mothers? Hey, that used to get me. Don't get me no more. God loves me. And there's nothing you can do. Or say about that. Why? Because when I said amen, I was certain of the covenant that God has with me. Were you blessed by the word of God? 
Let's give God some praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me get my prayer counselors down front uh, real quick. Uh, if you want to be born again, uh, give your life to Christ. Those of you joining us via uh, live stream, give your life to Christ. Praise God. God is ready uh, 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 to receive you.